I remember back uh, many years ago, I was in the hospital. I had a, had a Crohn's attack, and I think I was in the hospital for like uh, six weeks or something like that. And around the third week, I remember seeing some, some hustling and bustling from the nurses and uh, outside of my room, and, and they were uh, in and out of my room preparing for a new roommate to come in, and this would often happen. Uh, but today, that, that particular day seemed different. Then I saw a couple of police officers show up. Then I heard the, the nurses arguing with them. Then they came in to talk to me. Then the nurse said, uh, so you're getting a new roommate and I can't tell you much, but he's got a couple of broken legs uh, because he was high and he was running from the cops and he jumped off the roof of a school because he was stealing copper to sell drugs. And I was like, uh, okay, uh, if, is he safe to be around or, or, you know, is this okay? And she said, um, yeah, we don't really have any other beds and you're kind of in the best condition right now with the people on this floor, so we're going to stick him in here. And then the cop chimed in, well, if he does anything, just kick him in the legs. Okay, that sounds like a great piece of advice. So anyway, this guy comes in and, and he... He's got a couple of broken legs and he's laying in bed and he talks a lot. I mean a lot. And he's rude and he's harassing the nurses and, and he's, he's just not a good guy to be around. So I, I just kind of stick to myself and I watch movies on my little uh, portable DVD player. Uh, but this guy keeps talking and talking and talking. Uh, so then this, this one day, a day or two later, uh, I hear God asking me to, to pray for him. I was like... Sure, I can do that. So I just kind of bowed my head and prayed silently in my bed. But God was like, no, I, I want you to go over and I want you to pray with him. And that I didn't really want to do. I was, I was trying to avoid this guy. I didn't really want to be around him. He wasn't the kind of guy I wanted anything to do with. Uh, but as often is, God was very persistent. And, and all day I couldn't shake this feeling that, that God wanted me to go over and, and pray with him. So eventually that evening, I took my headphones off and I mustered up the courage and I said, Hey, uh, this, this may sound kind of weird, uh, but would you mind if I prayed with you? And he looked at me for a second with a kind of a puzzled look and he said, uh, Sure thing, boss. I noticed your Bible on your stand over there. And he pointed at the Bible I had there. So I got up and I went over to his bed and I wheeled my little IV pole over and, and sat down with him and, and I prayed with him for a while. And then we then we talked after the prayer and, and he he wasn't the same obnoxious guy that he was you know while we were talking you know apparently he he came from a really good home in, in Rosse and he went to church the whole time growing up and he even played guitar in his youth group worship band and then unfortunately he got mixed up with some older kids and went down a wrong path but we we had a really good talk and he cried a bit and and, and said you know, when this mess is all over, I'm going to go back to church. I'm going to straighten my life around. Now, I'm, I'm not sure if he ever did, uh, but I know that, that the Lord and him had a really good talk that day. And it was the start of something, and I hope he did. You know, when, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, he, he gives us opportunities to work for him. You know, to, to share his love, to, to shine his light, to, to help people. You know, that's, that's what happens when... When we walk with Jesus. But, but it's up to us to accept the, the challenge that God gives us. To, you know, think of all that, that Jesus has done for you. you know, he paid the price for your sins. He went to the cross and suffered and died in your place. You know, through his resurrection, he purchased your life. He did all of that because he loves you. That's why we, we take communion. To, to remember all that Jesus accomplished for us. His, his shed blood, his broken body. And that should, should spur us on in our relationship with him to, to seize those opportunities that he sends our way. Now at this time, I'm going to pray over these emblems and the emblems of yours at home. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. God, I thank you that you do give us opportunities to help people, to pray with people, to, to share your love with the world around us. God, I pray that you give us the courage to step into those opportunities. The opportunities that are only available because of all the work that you did, because of your shed blood and, and, and your broken body. God, I pray that you would help us to never take Christ's sacrifice for granted, that we would never you know, just take it haphazardly, that we would always remember and always use that to spur us on every single day.
to the opportunities that you give us. God, I pray that you bless these emblems that we would never forget. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray. Amen. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
Do you ever feel like you're going unnoticed in the kingdom of God? That, you know, that God has, has so much on his plate. There's so much in the world that needs his attention. There's so many big ticket items you know, around the earth at any given moment that, that you're just kind of over here doing your little things and, and, and we're not even on God's radar. You know, how, how could we help him? What, what does he see in me? Who, who am I to him? Well, this morning I want to talk about a man in the Bible who often gets overlooked. A man that, you know, you may have read his name once or twice while reading the Bible, maybe not. But amazingly enough, even though you probably haven't heard much about him, he was an important guy. He was one of the 12 disciples of Jesus, and his name was Thaddeus. So this morning, let's look at the, the Gospel of Mark. We're going to be around the Bible a bit. But the Gospel of Mark, chapter 3, verse 16 to 19. Mark 3, verses 16 to 19. And it says, These are the twelve he appointed. Simon, to whom he gave, gave the name Peter. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. To them he gave the name Bonerges, which means son of thunder. Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. So, we really don't know a lot about Thaddeus, but we can learn a lot from him and how Jesus saw him and, and how Jesus sees you today. So firstly, we learn that, that people may not know your name. People may not know your name, but Jesus does. So let's look at uh, three scriptures that give, give us a glimpse into who Thaddeus is and his name. So, so Luke 16, uh, sorry, Luke 6, verse 16. Luke 6, 16 says, Judas, son of James, and Judas Iscariot, who became a traitor. Then John 14, 22 says, Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you intend to show yourself to us and not to the world? Then Mark 3, again, 16 and 19, which we read earlier, These are the twelve he appointed, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. To them he gave the name Bonerges, which means sons of of Thunder, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. So we can see from these three scriptures that Thaddeus was called a few names, actually, by, by different people. One scripture referred to him simply as Judas, not Iscariot, or, or basically, you know, not, not the bad disciple, Judas, but not the one you're thinking of. You know, they, they didn't call him by his name, and many people didn't really know his name. You know, the disciples did some amazing things, and were taught some amazing things, and saw some amazing things. But people didn't know Thaddeus' name. But Jesus did. Jesus knew exactly who he was. Jesus knew him very well, and walked with him, and, and talked with him, and ate with him, and worked with him, and performed miracles with him for three incredible years. People didn't know his name, but the one who mattered most did. The one who, who chose him knew him. I remember back a few years ago when, when my son Emerson was just getting into playing goalie in hockey and we decided to put him into a goalie camp in the summer just to get him used to playing the, the position and because of our, our summer schedule, the only camp that, that worked was, a, it was an awesome one in, in PEI called Andrews Hockey Growth Programs. You know, it was a, it was a big camp with, with kids from all over the world there that week. And the thing that impressed me the most about the camp, though, was, was how organized and, and intentional they were with, with everything they did. You know, so we, we get over to the camp in PEI, and Emerson is, is nervous, and it's at the university arena, and the parking lot is packed with people. We, we go in through the doors, and we head uh, over to this spot there, and the, the head of the goaltending program meets us. But he goes right to, to Emerson and he says, hey, and puts his hand out and he shakes it and he says, you must be Emerson Hat." And Emerson was taken aback because this guy knew his name. Then we go down to the locker room and, and his jersey's hanging there with the, his name tag over the stall there. You know, he, he felt like a million bucks. He felt important. You see, Andrews pushes all its staff to learn the names of the kids in their groups before anything else and, and to use it often. And they do this because it makes the kids, kids feel like they're, they're seen. Like they matter, like they're not just going about their business behind the scenes, that they're important. You know, all of us like to be, to be recognized for, uh, from people and for people to know who we are. You know, it makes us feel important and our lives to feel meaningful. But 
That is not where we should find our worth. You know, we may not have books written about us or, or our names known by, by everyone. People might not recognize you when you walk down the halls of the mall in St. John. That doesn't matter. Jesus knows exactly who you are. He knows you by name. He knows how many hairs you have on your head. He knows your hopes and he knows your dreams. He knows all about you and wants to walk with you daily to be a part of your life, to help you through all your, your struggles and to do incredible things in your life. People may not know your name, but Jesus does. And that's worth more than any notoriety that the world could ever offer. And that's what's important. So firstly, we can learn from, from Thaddeus that, that people may not know your name, but Jesus does. And secondly, people may not realize your worth, but Jesus does. People may not realize your worth, but Jesus does. Let's look back at the Gospel of uh, Mark again. Mark 3, 13 to 15 this time. Mark chapter 3, 13 to 15. And it says, Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach, and to have authority to drive out demons. So for, for whatever reason, we don't get an in-depth record of, of Thaddeus' service as a disciple of Jesus Christ. But just the, the fact that he is named among the twelve should show us something. You know, at this point in Jesus' ministry, there was multitudes of people that were beginning to, to follow him everywhere he went. Uh, they, they saw the miracles, they were impressed. Jesus selected only twelve, however. Thaddeus was, was privileged to be called in that number. Jesus saw something in him, recognized some incredible value that nobody else saw. Jesus was choosing men who he would, would teach and he would equip to go and reshape the world and, and change history through planting churches and preaching and performing miracles. Nobody else realized the, the potential and, and the worth inside Thaddeus, but Jesus did. You know, I, I always try to help coach my, my kids' sports teams. I, I love that. I have a ton of fun with it. I remember helping to coach Emerson's hockey team a few years ago, and there was a player who was, was just starting, just first time they'd ever played. Some of the kids had been playing for a few years by that point and were pretty good, so uh, the dad of this kid came up to me during the first practice as it was going on. He said, I, I think I'm going to put my daughter down an age group. She, she can't really keep up out there. Now, I, I had watched her and noticed that, that she was trying super hard, and she was watching everyone else on the ice and trying to learn from them. And if I knew she, she kept going with that determination, she would be okay, that she would catch up. So, so I said, just, why don't you just give it a couple weeks, and I bet she'll be right up with everyone else by then. And sure enough, that's, that's what happened. I saw, saw the determination and realized if she kept that up, if she had that kind of work ethic, the, the skills would come. And sure enough, they did. You know, maybe, maybe people have over, overlooked you or, or looked down on you or... or you know, throughout your life. Maybe you, you've looked down on yourself and thought, I, you know, I'm no good. What can I offer God? Who am I? What can I do to, to further the kingdom of God around me? Maybe you've reached your, you know, you, you haven't reached your full potential in life because of what other people have limited you to, or, or maybe you limited yourself. You know, but their opinions of you, and even your own opinion, doesn't matter. Jesus knows your worth. God sees a, a fountain of incredible potential bubbling up inside of you, whether you feel it or not, or even whether anyone sees it or not. God sees your worth. God knows the plans that He has for your life, the, the direction He wants you to go in, even now, even today. Realize that He knows your true worth. Realize that, that He is opening doors of opportunity in your life. People may not realize your worth. You may not even realize your worth. But Jesus does. So firstly, we can learn from Thaddeus that people may not know your name, but Jesus does. Secondly, people may not realize your worth, but Jesus does. And thirdly, people may not recognize your effort, but Jesus does. People may not recognize your effort, but Jesus does. So look at what uh, Paul wrote to the uh, Colossians in Colossians 3, 23 and 24. Colossians chapter 3, 23 and 24. And it says, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as, as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, 
It is the Lord Christ who you are serving. You know, there, there are many, uh, aren't many teachings actually on Thaddeus, not, not many sermons written, not many books written, not many theological discussions on him. He probably didn't get a pat on the back that, that he deserved like some of the other disciples did. You know, we think of Peter and, and all the things that he did. But this verse in Colossians describes what kind of, what, what guys like Thaddeus did and how they acted. You know, he worked for God and not man. He, he followed Jesus and nobody else. He worked hard for the Lord and gave up his life to follow him. And actually Thaddeus was killed in the same way Jesus was. He was crucified in a town called Edessa because of his tremendous love and devotion for the Lord. Jesus recognized his efforts. God saw all that he did. God saw his heart and him helping when nobody else was watching. God recognized all of the, the sacrifice and all, all the hard work, even though nobody else did. But Thaddeus didn't do it for them. Like Paul said, Thaddeus did everything as if he was working for the Lord. I remember back to, to my days of the, as a youth pastor in, in Sussex. We, we had this cool thing called uh, Merge Youth, which was uh, five youth groups from the five churches in town would, would work together and have, have big events once in a while, and the five youth pastors would, would hang out and pray and plan. It was a lot of fun, and all, all five youth groups were, were growing because of it and were blessed. But I remember this one time, it was my turn to host an event in our church. Uh, we, were, we were planning it, and the other four guys were helping me. Uh, but, I, but I had the lion's share of the work, and I worked really hard on the event, and I did most of the planning, did a lot of the calling around and running around and, and the setup. So the night of the big event came, but I found myself kind of, kind of in the shadows, keeping things running, and, and, and another guy was kind of front and center and, and seemed to kind of take all the credit for the event. And I remember feeling hurt. But then I looked around as this rock and worship band was, was playing and I saw a bunch of kids around the front of the church with their arms raised, worshiping Jesus. And I remember the, the Holy Spirit spoke to me in, in that moment and I was reminded that that's why I did the work. Not, not for recognition, not to be in the spotlight, not to, to be seen, but so that teens would meet Jesus. And that's what happened. God saw what he did and that's all that mattered. I didn't care if anybody else did at that point. You know, the world may not see all that you do. People may not recognize the hours that you've spent in prayer for your kids or for your grandkids or your friends, family. The work that you do helping your neighbors or the work that you do for the Lord through the church or behind the scenes in your life, whatever it is. But God sees it. He recognizes it. In fact, the Bible says in Matthew not to lay up any treasures here on earth because they don't last, but to lay up your treasures in heaven because they are eternal and cannot be taken away. God sees your hard work. God sees your prayer life. God sees your time in the Word. God sees you sharing His love with the world around you. But often, other people don't. But that's okay. We don't do it for them, because we work for God. In closing, I want you to remember this morning how, how Jesus sees you. He, he knows your name. He recognizes your, your, your worth. He recognizes your efforts. God loves you and has great plans for you. Don't be discouraged thinking God is so big and has so much going on that he doesn't see you. He sees you and he loves you and he actively wants to be involved in your life. Now maybe you're watching this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I challenge you to make that step today. It is by far the greatest decision you can ever make in your entire life. Don't go another day on your own. Talk to me or another believer that can help. You will not regret it. You know, God loves you, and He knows you, and He sees you. Face every day as if you're, you're working for the Lord. Get into His Word daily. Talk with Him constantly, and never forget that God loves you.